Hello, and welcome to our session at Kubicom in Cloud Native Con North American 2023. I'm Tina Zhou, an advocate for infrastructure ecosystem advancement at ARM, and I also have the honor of serving as the board chair of LF Edge. In collaboration with my colleague Inding from Google, today, we will take you through a comprehensive guide on leveraging Kubernetes for edge computing. This guide is crafted to help you to understand how Kubernetes can be optimized for the edge to spearhead innovation in cloud native ecosystem. The best practice that are essential for creating a resilient and scalable edge infrastructure. This covered uh, convergence of our collective efforts and promising the future they hold for technology at the edge. We are excited to share our insight and look forward to a productive session focused on the robust possibility that Kubernetes brings to the edge computing. Welcome to our session on Kubernetes at the Edge, part of uh, Kubicom and Cloud Native Com North American 2023. Today, we will navigate through various aspects of edge computing and its growing intersection with Kubernetes. Our agenda includes understanding edge computing. We will begin with demystifying edge computing defining what it is, and discussing its importance and unique characteristics. Why Kubernetes in edge computing? Next, we delve into the reasons Kubernetes is becoming a popular choice for managing containerized applications at the edge, highlighting its benefits in such environments. Kubernetes projects on the edge. We will explore several Kubernetes projects that are tailored for edge computing, providing insights into how they operate their use cases. Kubernetes on the edge in production. This session will showcase real world examples of Kubernetes deployments at the edge, emphasizing the practical consideration and best practice. Elf Edge Catalog. We'll take a look at the Elf Edge landscapes, focusing on the catalog of projects and resources available for those looking to implement Kubernetes at the edge. Considerations for the future. To conclude, we will discuss future trends, potential development in edge computing, and how Kubernetes expected to evolve with this space. Let's embark on this journey to edge computing with Kubernetes, understanding its framework, applications, and the exciting potential it holds for the future. As we delve into the concept of edge computing, let's visualize its ecosystem. Edge computing brings computation and data storage closer to the sources of data. This proximity to data at its source can yield numerous benefits, including significant reduction in latency and bandwidth use. Here is a breakdown of edge computing layers illustrated in the diagram. Near side edge. We call it Mac. This is the closest edge layer to the end user, located at home, enterprise, or in node B levels. At this layer, we are operating on the scale of millions of devices, with latency as low as five milliseconds, suitable for immediate response applications like V2X, ARVR, and AI inference. City edge. As we move further from the near side edge to the city edge, the scope narrows to hundreds or thousands of nodes, serving applications like 
Content Delivery Network CDNs, and more intensive AR VR tasks. Regional Edge. Expanding our reach, the Regional Edge integrates cloud services and can serve tens to hundreds of applications dealing with tasks that can tolerate slightly higher latency, such as AI training, big data analytics, and video transcoding. Cloud. At the broadest layer, the cloud encompasses services that can handle larger latency, over 20 milliseconds, suitable for less time-sensitive tasks. This multi-tier architecture allows for a wide variety of applications, scaling from millions of devices at the edge to tens of nodes in the cloud. Optimizing the network to serve specific applications needs based on latency, data volume, and processing power required. Edge computing represents a paradigm shift in how we process data. By moving computation closer to where data is generated, we can unlock several key benefits. Reduced latency, Edge computing allows for faster response time by processing data locally rather than sending it back and forth to a distant cloud. This means actions can be taken almost instantaneously after the data is produced, which is critical for applications requiring real-time decision-making, such as autonomous vehicles, and industry automation. Bandwidth efficiency. With local processing, we send significant less data across the network. This not only speeds up the data analysis, but also saves bandwidth for other uses and reduces network congestion, leading to a smoother, more efficient digital experience enhance the privacy and security. When data is processed locally and not transmitted over a network, there's a less opportunity for interception or uh, eavesdropping. This inherent reduction in data travel bolsters security measurements, measures and enhanced user privacy by keeping sensitive information within a confined local network. Understanding these advantages, we can appreciate how edge computing is not just an evolution in computing architecture, but a necessary step towards a more responsive, efficient, and secure technological ecosystem. In the expanding realm of edge computing, Kubernetes emerged as a cornerstone technology. Here is why Kubernetes is essential. Scalability, as we push the boundaries of edge computing, we are deploying not just a handful, but thousands of edge devices. Kubernetes excels in handling this scale allowing for the efficient management of extens extensive networks of devices without compromising performance. Flexibility. The landscape of edge computing is incredibly diverse. Kubernetes brings the adaptability needed with its seamless deployment and management capabilities. Whether you are dealing with various workloads or different types of hardware, Kubernetes can make it easier to deploy applications consistently and manage them efficiently. Resilience. Reliability is non-negotiable in edge computing. Kubernetes introduced self-healing mechanisms such as auto-replacement, of failed nodes, 
auto restart of non-responsive programs, and even automated scaling to ensure consistent performance. This resilience is vital in maintaining the robustness required at the edge of network, where physical access can be very challenging. Kubernetes doesn't just help to manage the complexity of edge computing, it's enabling organizations to harness its full potential by offering a platform that's as dynamic and distributed as the edge environment itself. Adopting Kubernetes for edge computing comes with a set of best practices to maximize efficiency and security. Let's go over these key practices. Modular design. Simplify your applications by breaking them into smaller independent modules. This module, modular approach is ideal for deployment at the edge, making your applications easier to manage and update. State management. And for stateless applications or synchronized state carefully to prevent data inconsistency. Proper state management is crucial for ensuring high availability and reliability. Network optimization. Keep data transfer to the bare minimum without sacrificing necessary communication. Efficient data transfer is vital for maintaining speed and reducing latency in edge computing environment. Security. Prioritize security by securing device identity and use end-to-end -end encryption. Regular patch management is also essential to protect against, against vulnerabilities. Resource management. Efficiently manage the resources by optimizing CPU, memory, and storage usage. Kubernetes can help automate this optimization, ensuring that your applications run smoothly. Logging and monitoring. Implement a centralized logging and real-time monitoring. These practices are key for quickly identifying and resolving issues. Maintaining the overall health of your edge computing infrastructure. By following this best practice, you can ensure that your Kubernetes deployment is as robust, secure, and efficient as possible in an edge computing context. Uh, thank you, Tina. So I'm continuing talking about this uh, edge developers are using Kubernetes so this is the survey we did on 2021 by CNCF. So it shows more than two third developer in edge area already using Kubernetes. So uh, we are doing a new one in 2023 during the COVID, but you definitely can see the trend. Why edge developers are using Kubernetes because uh, the things that Tina just concluded, I won't elaborate, but you can see the trend. I think people can decide by their foods. So uh, here are three popular Kubernetes projects in CNCF. There's a micro Kubernetes, it's developed by the Canonical. It's a fully component Kubernetes with a very small footprint. And also K3S, its developer by the Rancher, is an official Kubernetes sandbox project. It's developer by Rancher. And also the Kubo Edge. This uh, we won't call is a Kubernetes distribution because it breaks down the Kubernetes by cloud side and edge side do a few modifications. So it's extend Kubernetes in the edge computing. I will elaborate a little bit more in the following slides. And also there's many more. And also, for example, the Open Yort is developed by Alibaba. It's very popular too. So we did have a panel discussion in 
since F the Cloud Native Con 2021, however, it's what a virtual uh, hybrid events in LA. So if you are interested, you can come to watch the video. We invited people from Rancher, Salesforce, uh, Alibaba Cloud, and all these people. So we discussed about compare pro and cons on the user cases for Kubernetes projects in the Edge computing, if you're interested, you can look at, uh, watch the recording from 21, 2021 Cloud Native Con, Kubernetes Con. So we plan to do another one on next year's European Kubernetes Con to refresh the knowledge to see what's going on and what's the update. So I, I'm going to elaborate a little bit on the Kubernetes Edge, why we use this so we use the extended Kubernetes because they give us a unified deployment APIs. So basically, before that, if you want to deployment on the edge, so you need to do your own OTA update. However, with Kubernetes, so think about that you have you are a regular cloud application developers. So what you do is just do the Kuba control deploy or Kuba control apply, it will do that for you. That's the separate from the Kuba edge. In order to solve the edge cloud communication problems, we set up a channel. So we replace the Kuba API, uh, API server with a cloud core. Basically, it as a proxy talk to the edge. So instead of a simplified Simplify use the Kubernetes. We have a Kubernetes. Uh, the uh, Edge core is extend from Kubernetes, so they take over the communication between cloud and Edge node. So that solve the network problem. So because it's not a Kubernetes Edge session, I won't go deeper enough. But with this application, so you can get a benefit from Kubernetes. The uh, unified Kubernetes deployment APIs, uh, auto scaling, and also resiliency. So here are some already in production examples. So first is on the left. Basically, from the cloud, you talk to a highway toll booth. So each toll booth you deploy as an edge node. So you can see that a heterogeneous deployment. What you could be the node could be running on x86 servers or it could run on the ARM servers because with Kubernetes you can containerize your application on the edge. So you compile different cores, then you deploy on different nodes. However, the API are the same. You can accumulate data back to your cloud and do the analysis. On the right is a bridge monitoring system. You can see the real picture, how you place your edge node, your sensors, your devices, how you communicate and re use a 5G or 4G technology You communicate with your cloud. You do the uh, analysis and the monitoring. So here is a little bit elaborate how the actual deployment is. So in order to deploy on the edge node, it's impossible to go in the 100 kilometers road to update individually. So, and also you don't need to worry about your developer, your own o OTA update programs. What do you do is just Kuber apply or Kuber update. So your Kuber, Kuber control apply a new version, then your edge node application will rolling out using the same Kubernetes deployment mechanism. Another interesting thing is uh, Acrino. Acrino is an Alpha Edge project. So Tina is the Alpha Edge uh, TSE board, member, uh, board chair. I'm the TSE Acrino uh, TSE chair. So we have a bunch of blueprint. Basically, the blueprint is a combination of binary deployment to showcase how your edge computing should do and you can download the binary to verify yourself. And that's all open infrastructures. 
the application include 5G AI. And an interesting thing is uh, we use this one as uh, the edge AI. Even though uh, this is the architecture, it showcase you how you put your inference app on your device. So because it's more close to your to you and without transfer all your data back to the cloud for save your benefits and also uh, low latency and the privacy so you don't need to upload your sensitive data back to the cloud. It depends on where your edge located. If you have a uh, large edge, city edge, you can deploy large models. Uh, for example, LM, a large language model you can deploy there. However, if you want to deploy on your home or even on your cell phone, you probably have to have a small tailored model to deploy there. We showcase this one. Uh, we are going to upload this uh, slides you can download from uh, the links. Then you can try yourself to see how you can deploy a new application, inference application on your de mobile device to do the inference. And also how you can update your model through a simple API without complicating your life. Yeah, just to add a comment to the uh, AI Edge there. So we do have uh, LF uh, Edge, AI Edge proposal, and uh, with the hyperscaler joiners bringing their own large language model, our first uh, showcase will be using the Open AI Whisper model for the voice recognition, and uh, we probably do some uh, fine tune for the uh, verticals, and we'll showcase with Hugging Face. Um, so. Uh, welcome to join. We have uh, APM uh, California time every Monday. We have meeting. You can find the wiki page on the LF Edge. Today, uh, we are delving into the LF Edge catalog and advanced solution designed for managing Linux Foundation Edge applications with ease and efficiency. Comprehensive re uh, uh, repository. The LF Edge catalog stands as a comprehensive uh, repository, centralized resources, and simplifying deployment uh, processes for users. It emphasizes on harnessing edge computing's full potential without the adding complexity. Catalog features. It's just like you walk in an forest store, you say, hey, can I try on for two days? Here you go, you got a car, you try on every single aspect of the car for two days. The catalog explicit the smarter application stack, reflecting its adaptability and breadth. It demonstrates how the catalog supports diverse IoT, smart cities, and emerging technologies applications by making daunting tasks manageable. Catalog impact. This tour is instrumental in driving the evolution of edge computing, highlighting essential areas such as IoT and smart cities. It's designed to transform complex challenges into streamlined processes and fosters innovation in the edge computing domain. Target audience is the LF Edge catalog is tailored for developers and IT professionals. It acts as a bridge for those integrated by edge computing, a providing a platform to explore and experiment. Call to action, we encourage you to utilize the Alpha Edge catalog to facilitate more efficient operations and deployments. It's an open innovation to partake in shaping the future of edge computing with the LF Edge catalog as your guidebook. Yeah, I hope you enjoy driving the car for two days. But leveraging the LF Edge catalog, you position yourself at the forefront of edge computing innovation, prepare to tackle the challenges and opportunities that come with this rapidly evolving technology landscape. As we look forward the horizon of Kubernetes edge computing, 
there were critical considerations that will shape our journey ahead. Interoperability. The key to a seamless connected future lies in interoperability. With an ever-expanding universe of devices, ensuring they can communicate and work together is non-negotiable. It's about creating a cohesive ecosystem where compatibility is the cornerstone. Sustainability. Our technology must not only be smart, but also sustainable. We are steering towards incorporating power efficient de devices and harnessing renewable energy sources like solar panel, solar power for edge devices. The aim is to minimize the carbon footprint of our technological advancement. Regulations. I see somebody from government is sitting, hi. So staying updated with the evolving landscape of data privacy laws is um, imperative. As regulations tighten globally, our systems and operations must adapt to maintain the compliance and protect user privacy. These three pillars, interoperability, sustainability, and regulations will guide us as we navigate the challenges and opportunities in Kubernetes edge computing. By addressing these areas with foresight and innovation, we set the stage for a resilient and responsible tech ecosystem. As we cultivate our discussion on Kubernetes and edge computing, it's clear that these technologies are not just parallel tracks but are converging to propel cloud native innovation forward. Unify the progress. Kubernetes serves as the orchestration backbone, while edge computing extends the reach of our cloud capability. Together, they are a synergistic force, ushering in a few era of distributed computing that is more accessible, efficient, and scalable. Best practice integration. Embracing best practices is more than a recommendation. It's a necessity for creating an edge infrastructure that is resilient and agile. By committing to standards and continuous improvement, we can navigate the complexities of modern computing environments confidentially, or conf confidently, I mean. In summary, the intersection where Kubernetes meets edge computing is fertile ground for technological growth. By fostering collaboration, prioritizing innovation, and adhering the best practice, we position ourselves at the forefront of transformative wave in the industry. Here is to a future where the potential of cloud native technologies is fully realized in a world that's always on and always connected. Thank you all for your participation and attention today. And it's been a pleasure discussing Kubernetes for edge computing and its impact on building resilient and scalable applications. We hope you found this session insightful and that it sparks further innovation in your projects. We greatly appreciate your feedback to continue improving and making these sessions more valuable for you. Please take a moment to scan the QR code displayed on the screen and share your source on this session. Your input is crucial for us to learn and grow, and we look forward to hearing from you. Once again, thank you for joining us at Kubecom and Cloud Native Com North America 2023. I see somebody going to the mic now. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, five minutes left. If you have any questions, feel free to go to the mic. Thank you. I appreciate it.